Yeah. But, um, in terms of um, sync, like there was something that you wanted to tell me yesterday about the Silicon Valley something. Ah, uh, yeah. About the languages, because for yeah, me, yeah. the Babel Tower has been like, wow, like discovery. Because I I heard the story so many times, and mm -hmm. I never had a mental construct of like what it means until yeah, then. yeah. <coughs> I, I will send you the link. Uh, yeah, because like so, yeah, that was a revelation for me because I was sitting in the uh, I was sitting on the plane and just going back from from the study tour. Yeah, and the study tour was like you know, like you are on to on top of the world, okay? So you're so you're trying to learn how does Silicon Valley produces how does it produce its magic, okay? Like sustainable innovation, and every uh, like uh, every uh, presentation and every lecture I heard. It was something about how to make people collaborate, how how to make this collaboration productive, and things like that. And it all it all boiled down to things like: so first of all, you want to people just like just make them talk to each other, like just in general, because <coughs> yeah, like that because the concept of bumping into each other. Yeah, like yeah, the, I, I'm not sure about this particular concept, but the, the they built their basic... campus, work campus. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way that people would bump into each other. Yes, yeah. So basically, there was like an example of like uh, water cooler, water mm -hmm. cooler talk. Okay, because yeah, everyone is like super focused on whatever they're doing because everyone is a good employee and they they want to be like he head down, just in the work, right? But then they would just have this uh, and and before that like maybe i don't know maybe 30 years ago it was all about um like people smoke smoked a lot <laughs> right so i'm mm -hmm. not sure the word like <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so yeah so and even at, 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 at my at my uh, at my job in uh pub, in publishing house so yeah people were hanging out and just smoking for like I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and they just talked about like whatever. And even though they, 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 most of them were working from from the same office, so we had like an op open office space and things like that. But it's when they went to smoke, they uh, can they they socialized and talked about things. And of course, they could talk about any random subject, right? And this is and this is one of the things that came up during this uh, lectures that. Uh, that like the, there was this case why Silicon Valley is the most mm, like there's a, most of um, trade secrets being exchanged in the world. Like okay, like exchanging trade secret is 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 a, is a, is a bad idea, right? <laughs> so like you may get to jail f for life, right? Yeah. Uh, but. <coughs> But the Silicon Valley is like a just a notorious place for just exchanging trade secrets. In in what sense? Not not like people trade them, but it's just people go to the same gyms. They they socialize outside the work environment, right? So they yeah. they may work for for rival they may work for rival companies, but they will go to the same I don't know like spa, okay? <laughs> so and and they will be neighbors, okay? So or that's why it was. Yeah. Yeah, so or, or or just class classmates, right? Uh, or just friends. Um, so that's why uh, the the whole idea was like what create an environment where people will just talk to each other first of all, and then with uh, globalization and with like uh, research teams being spread out all over the world, of course, there came up this sub, uh, this topic of. Um, like cultural barriers, okay, and then we we uh, we were shown some like huge graphs of like how I, I think it was like Halle Burton, this oil big oil company, Halle Burton, I guess, uh, and I think it was IBM who did the research how their social structure is like, what is the actual social structure, like what this graph that that um, you built with Compass, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so yeah, so, so so they so so there is like a formal structure, who reports to whom, 
And then they try to figure out, so, okay, we have like, I don't know, like 10,000 people in the company. So how are they connected on like in informal level? And, and they were like, they were like very significant findings uh, because it turned out like they were like central nodes. In many cases, there were central nodes. So if you lose this person, okay, <laughs> this whole structure just is uh, unraveled, okay? <laughs> because like people were interconnected through this particular person and not too much, they, they were not too much connected to each other, okay? And so this, so this is the kind of things that, uh, that we were like uh, exploring. Um, and yeah, and then I'm, I'm like, just like suddenly realized that, hey, this, this whole thing was like beautifully described in, the, in this uh, Genesis 11. So if you, I will send you the link so you can see for yourself. Uh, and it was like, I couldn't believe it, it is as if it was like, written as a result and actually i i did i did my uh, review so i submitted my after the program was over i submitted my review um about the study tour to sherry meta if you know him sherry meta was the dean of uh, q q oh, okay uh, so so so, ex so i presented this finding of mine this the, the, the this whole uh, idea of sustainable innovation it has a long history, actually. Okay, so here is the link. Um, just a sec. It's it's more powerful if you if you just look in the text in the original text. Uh, okay. Because uh, how do I send the link? Facebook. In Zoom. Or you can use Zoom. Yeah. <sighs> So, okay, <laughs> so it starts, so do you see the text? Oh, hold on. I have too many tabs open. Okay, Bible Gateway, sounds like fun. Uh, just a sec. Is it like the search engine for Bibles? Oh, it's, it's just all translations, uh, most translations. Mm. Uh, <coughs> Okay, uh, in like on all, all languages, and this and this particular NAV is new international version is 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 like the de facto standard uh, in mm -hmm. terms of modern modern language and clarity and everything. So that's the best best translation. Like an interpretation. No, 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 no. It's a literal translation from the oldest manuscripts available. Okay, mm -hmm. but the, but this yeah. one took like eleven years to produce, and like uh, like a hundred scholars worked on it. So it's it has a good pedigree. I mean, in terms of like the clarity and also objective, uh, like um, non non biased view on the text. So yeah, so it can it's considered like uh, the best modern translation. Uh, so so you see the text, right? Mm -hmm. So now the whole world had one language and the common speech. Do you see the, the, this, uh, like not just one language, okay? So like we may speak Russian, but we might speak very different like dialects or have a very different like, different, like background. So we will probably like, we, so it's not just the language. We, we, we also need like a common speech, common symbols, common, you see what Concepts. I mean? Yes, common like metaphors and things mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, so that's that's important. And then as as people moved eastward, they found the plain of Shinar and settled there. Okay, so they settled in like a valley of sorts. <laughs> that's uh, like also important. Like you want people like a structure, to... something. No, no, no. But they they, they settled together. Like mm -hmm. they had in the like physical proximity okay no, no, I, I get it like that's what i mean by structure something that was like feasible to unite them in the physical environment and, and yeah and they could go to the gym together they could go to mm -hmm. like you see what i mean like they, they could they had they had physical proximity mm -hmm. 
And then they said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. And they used bricks, a brick instead of stone and, and tar for mortar. And then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first, so this is actually the first recorded innovation. Okay. So first of all, they, they, they did not, they did not create the tower, okay? That was not the innovation, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they created building blocks, yeah. okay? And, and that's the purpose of, this. Basic, basically the purpose of any innovation. Like you, you want to create these building blocks and then you can create whatever you want, right? It mm -hmm. might be maybe economical model, it, it could be business model. It, it, so, so that's why it was so powerful, okay? That was, that's why it was so powerful. So not just bricks as a building blocks, but also, uh, they um, infrastructure to build. They, no, they use. They also use tar for mortar. Means uh, they also found the way how to um, how, how to glue them together. Yeah. Like, okay, so not just building blocks, but also technology how to glue them together so that now we can build uh, uh, like big structures. So they. So, so they was like, they were like, okay, so let's build ourselves a city with the tower that reaches to the heavens, okay? So that we may uh, make a name for ourselves. The uh, otherwise, um, mm? yes, the like yeah, so yeah, it's like, let's big, uh, let's build like a big rocket and reach to the sky or something like that, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, we know now for sure that, like, especially with this case of Apollo project, okay? <coughs> But you can rationalize that the Apollo project, uh, it was just out, out of necessity because they needed to test intercontinental inter, inter, uh, ballistic missile technology mm -hmm. and things like that. So, yeah, so they, they built it out of necessity. But it was quite a feat. I mean, quite a like, uh, inspiring thing for, hum like, big step for humanity, humanity right? And uh, 50 years or whatever, like, after, Humanity did not invent any other ideas what to build with all the technologies that's available. They're like, yeah, we need another Apollo project, okay? But this time it will be not about moon, but it will be about Mars, okay? And it's like, guys, do you have any, uh, I don't know, like any imagination? Like, why is it every time it's like either tower that reaches to the sky or like Apollo that reaches to the moon or like, big big rocket that reaches to the mars like can we maybe do something incredible in terms of healthcare or it's like <laughs> uh, so, so so yeah so this is like so that's why i'm like uh, retrospectively i'm like okay yeah they wanted to build another rock, a, a rocket to, to reach to the sky and it's quite st stereotypical behavior okay and um and then okay so so, but but again, this is not the biggest thing in this story. Okay, like yeah, we know that this is very powerful innovation to 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 uh, find uh, these building blocks and technology to glue to to bake them and glue them together. Then yes, then you can build. They can you then the sky is the limit. Okay, but there is in in this in this scripture there is also basically a prediction about technological singularity okay so that's that's more impressive stuff okay so he, here it comes um so but the lord came down to see the city do you still see the text do you still yeah. fall? and the tower the people were building and now get <coughs> this the lord said if as one people speak in the same language they have begun to do this then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Okay, <laughs> so so this is basically like a prediction about sin technological singularity. Okay, and this is the recipe. Okay, so people think, oh, technological singularity, it it boils down to computational power. Okay, but mm -hmm. then they like wait, but but uh, even like Penrose stated in in the interview with uh, I don't know with Lex that uh, consciousness is not computational actually okay so even penrose believes that uh so technological singularity is not about computational power or whatever Compute technological singularity is basically nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them okay that's the definition right yeah 
And what are the obstacles? Okay, so come, let us go down and confuse the language so that will so that we'll not understand each other. Okay, <laughs> so the so the Lord <laughs> scatter them from, and not just the language. Okay, because then it says that, so the Lord scattered them from the from there over over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. So he also severed their lines of communication. Okay, they were scattered. That means. Like if you look at the technological progress, of course you will see that 18th, 19th century, once you got people connected, once you created a lines of communication like telephone and then ultimately the internet, right? Mm -hmm. Is the ultimate. And then the rate of um, technological progress, oh, uh, I mean, uh, it's, I, I, it's a, actually it's a faulty, it's a faulty argument because uh, the quantum leaps of like, of course, it was a big jump from like no electricity to electricity, right? So, but in terms of this, the frequency of innovation, so not in terms of like the impact, of, but in terms of frequency, of course, with internet, it, 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 it just increased uh, exponentially, okay? Mm -hmm. And of course, not just the internet, but also computational power. Uh, and now we have this uh, Moore's law and things like that. Uh, so, so yeah, so it's not just a language barrier. It's also uh, physical, uh, like lines of communication. And now we are in a situation where some things were um, <laughs> actually, uh, so now we over sort of overcame these limitations. So now it, we overcame this problem that we are scattered, okay? Uh, because we can talk to each other uh, across the pond, no problem. Uh, and then this confusion of the language, this still the problem with people. And even this problem, I think it's largely addressed with first of all, in. English as an international language, okay? Mm -hmm. The thing that is not fully addressed is common speech, like what we discussed. Mm -hmm. Like, not just one, but common speech. Like, if you talk to an Indian guy in, and, he, and he speaks English like his native language, but he has such a different culture and such a different, like, way of thinking that you probably don't have common speech, even though you speak exactly. English. And, Okay. That's the thing so, that I was trying to, to explain to you in terms of different backgrounds and different like skill sets and professional experience. It all layers on top yeah. of each other and it confuses. Even when you like you have 10 people on a call, you talk about exactly the same thing, but everyone mm -hmm. understands it differently. Uh-huh. Yes. So this uh I don't think that um this problem should be addressed on establishing like the same education or the same culture or anything. I uh, don't think so. Uh, it's, it's that they also had, and I think this could be the key, uh, they also had the common goal, okay? So basically, if you meet an Indian and, you, and he doesn't even speak English, okay? But you happen to be in this certain scenario where you have this common I don't know, like existential threat or or just common like problem. Okay. Yeah, like if you're in a cave with someone and there's a wild animal, you'll cooperate. Like it doesn't matter yeah. what kind of uh, language you, you see, use. And you can use like sign language, no problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, yeah, I think this common goal and common vision is 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 a more fundamental thing than just uh, your user interface like the, yep. your uh yeah so that motivation and purpose and that, that was actually yes. the reason why i created that channel because i had an empirical kind of like feeling that because uh, i've been to so many of these calls where i i've i've seen people talking about the same thing but interpreting it differently and I was like, man, there is something that is missing. Like, <laughs> obviously, like mm -hmm. these people, despite their differences, are still willing to take these calls. And what is that? And I was mm -hmm. like, let's just create a motivation and purpose channel and try to, to extract mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's actually like helping. Yep. 
Yep. And once we are on the same page in terms of what we want to achieve and and especially why we want to achieve that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so in the Bible, it's interesting that question uh, of like, <clears throat> what's your like ultimate goal of everything? It's basically the same question as like, what's the ultimate reason for everything, mm -hmm. okay? So, so once, <clears throat> so, so this is when it all comes together, when people, do, they don't just decide to, like what they want to do okay but they also are on the same page why they want to do it okay and this is like a, a super so this is probably the hardest <laughs> the hardest part because yeah. like like everyone so 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 we should really make like some like basic assumption like first of all do we believe that everyone is altruistic or inherently like self-seeking okay and i mean we should we should make some basic assumption and this is what i call first principles so i would say i believe no like inherently everyone is like self-seeking okay but but it's our um, firmware you know yeah it's our firmware yeah but people with this system two uh system two thinking they're like yeah but i think i have better chances on this planet if it, in terms of my uh, my uh, survival uh, through the cooperation. Yes. Okay. The long-term thinking versus the short-term yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why. So that's why you you should consider all the like you should consider all the participants as like. So this is your assumption. Like they everyone is self-seeking, but they are smart enough to figure out that yeah they can achieve much more by cooperating. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and this kind of first principles, they, they really change, they really define how to then build the rules and procedures in your organization because you always have this in your mind. Like I am dealing with uh, egoistic individuals versus, oh, I, 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 it's just such a wonderful group of people. Everyone is so loving. Everyone is so sharing. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then you create rules and procedures based on this assumption, okay? And yeah. so you will create a very different <laughs> dynamics in the group. Uh, and, and, uh, and yeah, so, so that's oh, why... Th this call will be super interesting. Um, I'm going <laughs> to uh, upload it to YouTube and label it the... the we, we need a name for this. Like for for what? For this contradiction of languages and speech or something. But oh, yeah, 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 let's yeah. figure it out later after the call. Yeah, and it was it was it was funny that uh, Taylor uh, mentioned uh, his relative uh, that like that his superpower would be like yeah. speak speak all the languages because man, this is like amazing. Okay. Uh, so I will send you the link or you can just, or you can just, uh, type in, in search acts two in this Bible gateway, actually okay. X, 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 X one. Okay. X one. You send me the link in, in chat. Okay. Well, I will. Yeah. <coughs> so that, yeah. So just to, um, you can appreciate the power of this concept. Um, just a sec. Wait, do we have the general call in like 20 minutes? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, where is the, okay. So this is how the, uh, the, world's most impactful movement started okay so book of acts it it uh gives you this historical um uh perspective on how this most significant and most impactful mo cultural movement and uh started uh so okay going back to so from verse 6, they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? So they were like super focused on building their own little kingdom of Israel and, mm -hmm. and, and, return, and return to the old glory. And old glory was quite powerful. It was the kingdom of Solomon 
and it was the most powerful kingdom in the history. And he said to them, uh, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, okay? So that's chapter one. He said, you will receive power, okay? So what was the power <laughs> uh, when Spirit came on them? Uh, and uh, so, the, uh, so you can just go to the next chapter, Acts, Acts 2. Uh, you can navigate. Uh, the arrow? You, yeah, yeah, just arrow. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So when they when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing a blowing of of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. They separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised, and began to. It began to speak in other tongues, like in other languages, <laughs> as the Spirit enabled them, okay? Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven, okay? When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each, each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed. They were like, ah, ah, are not all these who speak in Galileans? The, then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? <laughs> Parthians, Medas, and then and then it's like 21. They this is like 21 nations that they just recited here. Okay, mm -hmm. and the amazed and perplexed, they asked like, "What does it mean?" And they were like, "Oh, they they must be drunk or something." Ah, uh, they made fun of them and say they must get too much fun, too too much wine. So okay, so that was the power. So he said, "You guys stay here uh, until you will receive Holy Spirit, and you will receive power." that would allow you to build this uh, worldwide movement. Like you will be my witness to the ends of the earth, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and that was the new gift that they received. The power of basically communicating to anyone and in the way that everyone understands you clearly. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the foreign language. It's ability to communicate so to that resonate. no matter, to, yeah, no matter whom you speak to, they still get they they still get your message, okay? Mm -hmm. And and it was also literally foreign languages, but the, but the thing is, there was so it's much a metaphor. more different. Yeah. Well, um, I believe it what actually happened because if you see if you look at the dynamics, how this spread. Uh, it's really hard to explain from point of view of any, I don't know, like there was no, there was no political force behind this movement. There was basically all the odds were against them. And still, no, no, but I mean the resonance, um, you know, it, it is represented as a, as a, you know, native or non-native language, but mm -hmm. in reality, it's the resonance that people felt in terms of, Hey, they're speaking my language. You know? Yes, yes. That's yes, exactly yes, what yes. people feel in, in our community yeah. very often. Like, hey, yeah. like this is what I resonate with. Yes, yes. <coughs> so th this, is, this is powerful. So this is from biblical perspective in Genesis 11. That was the most powerful thing so that God himself said, there's nothing impossible for you. If you came together as one people speaking the same language, okay, so... Yeah, we need to be like really coherent, like really um, like a group, like tight group. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and then we should speak the same language, and we should have this common. We should have this laser focus on this common goal. Then God said, "There's nothing impossible. This is like technological singularity right there." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and then Jesus Himself said, "Okay, guys, you will receive this power." You will receive this power back. To do what? Uh, to do things when like there's nothing impossible. Like you can build worldwide movement. You can change the course of the history, and that's what they actually did. Because now we live in the uh, before Christ and not the Minai uh, age. We now celebrate 2020. Yeah. Since Jesus was born, right? So, like, and also Judeo-Christian civilization is the 
essence of what we call Western civilization, okay? And that was just this small group who could speak everybody's language, okay? Yeah. So, so yeah, so, um, so yeah, so that's absolutely powerful. And that's, I mean, that's a Bible superpower. Bible itself is, is the re representation of that common speech, you know? Uh, because oh, yeah. It is, it is built on these principles, on mm -hmm. principles of resonating with everything that is human and also resonating with the realities of life, right? I read it a human. long time ago and I don't remember uh -huh. anything, but like there are things like ego. There are things like, mm -hmm. you know, life and death. There are mm -hmm. basic things that we all resonate with. And, and especially, if, especially free will. <laughs> yeah. Because like, because like uh, even uh, Yuval Harari himself, he attributed this concept of free will to Bible. So he yeah. said, yeah, this is where it comes from. But, but he says that it's, it's like artificial concept, but he attributed this concept that it came from Bible, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and, and it's crazy <laughs> how many things that we may think are like unique or like technological uh -huh. singularity and things like that, but like it uh -huh. already was described it, it, uh -huh. in just different language and different speech. Yes. And now we study in Silicon Valley, like, yes, if you want to continue this, in a way innovation process if you want to make it sustainable we need to come together as one <laughs> people in one valley in one cafeteria yeah. okay and we need to overcome our cultural barriers that's <laughs> crazy to, to develop like common speech okay and then there's nothing impossible so yeah it's officially there is nothing impossible if we overcome this kind of and that's uh, the same thing you know i keep mentioning bell labs but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same mm -hmm. valley uh, of people speaking the same language and having common speech and just, you know, having a common goal of, you know, and being together world. and being in yeah. being together, staying together, not just everyone in his own cave. Okay. Yep. But no, they were like working together. Yes. Yeah. This is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we need to do better at, at like communicating this idea, this concept, <laughs> It is also hard to, to explain, and hopefully this call will be this introduction to that. And okay. Let, let's okay. see if it resonates. Uh, it does right. a lot uh, to me, at least. Mm, okay. All right. Let's let's jump into daily calling. And oh yeah. All right. Thanks, cool. man. This All is right. great. Thanks, man. Mm.